Okay, so this is Vince with Green Joe Coffee, and uh, today what I'm going to be trying to answer, this is my take three on this video, <laughs> is uh, should you get into coffee trucking? Should you start a coffee truck? And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a question I get so much, and there's different ways of asking that question. Are coffee trucks profitable? Should I start coffee trucks? You know, that type of thing. Uh, but ultimately, there's... You know, it's going to be it's going to be your decision. I'm going to give you uh, a set of scenarios and some things to think about, um, some questions that you should probably ask yourself, and then from there you just have to decide on whether or not getting in a coffee truck is for you. So let's just kind of dive into it. So the first thing we need to do is ask ourselves: Are coffee trucks profitable? And I would raise the question: Well you know, what is profitability? You have to define what profitable is. So, you know, to me, profitability is making more money than you spend, right? Well, gosh, isn't that something we can all relate to? Like, you know, how much money are you going to spend? How much money are you going to make? I mean, those are awesome questions, but, you know, they're very, very difficult to answer. And particularly if you have an issue with money management already while you're still working your day job. So if you're working, you know, your day job and um, you're not within a budget right now or you're spending your money, you're living outside of your means, well, that behavior and that habit is going to translate directly over into entrepreneurship. So it's not going to magically change once you get into entrepreneurship, if you're overspending, that's going to happen in entrepreneurship as well. It may be for inventory or things that you think are cute for the truck or whatever, but it's still going to be basically overspending. So I think budgeting and having the habit and the discipline of budgeting is something that needs to be fixed before you decide to do any side hustle. Uh, because I do believe that a lot of people are trying to fix their money management issues with a side hustle. Um, the way they look at it is they have a hole in their pocket and for them, in order to get more, you know, in order to get more money, they just want to put more money in their pocket. Well, if you got a hole in your pocket, you're going to keep spending, right? Like I think, I think Biggie Small said it the best, more money, more problems, right? So essentially, and there's, I can't remember what the exact like psychological phenomenon is for this, but there is something out there that says the, the more money, the more paycheck you have, the more, the more money you're going to spend. And we know that, right? Like the more food you have on the plate, the more food you're going to eat. So essentially that's what it comes down to. So if, if the money management issue is there already, that's going to translate directly over into coffee truck and coffee truck and it's not going to bail you out of that. So if that's the case, mm, I don't know if that's the way to go. What I would first say is probably just get your money right. Um, get into the discipline of budgeting, you know, set the, set the, an alarm on your phone for the first of the month or wherever your paycheck is and start looking at your, your bank statements and coming up with, okay, where am I spending my money and how am I going to create some type of barrier to prevent me from spending that money in the future? Okay. Um, so that's going to be, I think the first step. So then after that, it comes down to an income versus consumption And coffee has a great markup. Okay. So, you know, you, you, whatever you spend eight bucks on a pound of coffee, um, it comes out to somewhere around uh, 25 to 50 to 50 cents for a double shot of espresso. Um, so it's less than a cup, uh, less than a dollar per latte. And then you sell your average latte for five to six bucks. So the markup is good. OK, um, so to answer that question, is coffee profitable? Yes, coffee is profitable, but how you spend your money is going to be dependent on you. Um, so, you know, that you'll have to get into a little bit later on. Um Really, the question that I that I want to ask you is how much how much money do you need above the poverty line um, for you to live a good life? I mean, that's really what it kind of boils down to, right? Like, um, you know, per year, how much money do you need to make in order for you to feel like you're living a good life? And then that needs to correlate to how much time you're spending uh, to make that money, right? So if you know, because we've all been there. If you're working your ass off to make money, to make enough money to live a good life, but then you don't have the time to live a good life. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? So there's a correlation. There's a balance that that needs to uh, that needs to be searched for. Basically, you know, on, on, in in terms of how much 
how much, how many hours per week does it, does it take for you to make that amount of money? So for me, um, you know, to live a good life, I need to bring in 60 K a year. Okay. 60 K a year. I get to do the things that I want to do with my family. Um, I get to go on a week long vacation, uh, once a year. And then every month we can go on a road trip. Um, we can spend 600 bucks a month on food, which includes, um, our meats and our alcohol, because those are our two most, um, expensive, food items in the grocery bill. And then it also allows enough income for my wife and I to have a date night, go out and spend 50, 60 bucks at a restaurant, you know, have a, have a, have a, a good meal, good entree, order a drink if we want you to order the appetizer. Right. So, uh, for all that, uh, you know, what, at the end of the year, that's what I need in order for me to, to live comfortably. Okay. 60 K a year. Now, if I make 70, great. If I make 80, great. Right. But 60 is what I need. Okay. And then you go, well, how many hours a week do you need to work to get to that 60? And that's where the equation gets really interesting because you go, all right. So if you worked 50 hours per week to make $60,000 a year, you know, uh, how does that look? And you go, well, okay, well, 50 hours is a little bit more than I want to work. Um, I would prefer 40 or less. Um, so, you know, you go, yeah, you know, not so much, but if you go, well, okay, well, what if, what if I make $60,000 a year, but then I only have to work 30 hours a week? Well, then it looks a lot better, right? Cause then you're like, okay, well, that's, that's a day off every week. That's three day weekends every week. That looks pretty sweet, you know? So if you had a three day weekend every week and you got to go, you know, out to eat once a week with your wife. You got to do taco Tuesday night with your family. Uh, once a year, you got a vacation, like that type of stuff that starts to look a lot more appealing. But then, you know, there's a little bit more depth to that equation. Cause you go, well, okay, well, what if, what if it was 50 hours a week for your first year, but then your second year, you only had to work 30, would you do it then? You know, it's like, okay, so you got to invest a year up front. But then the next five years after that, I, I don't have to work, you know, 40, 50 hours a week. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Right. So there's a lot that kind of goes into the equation. And I think that, and I do have to give credit to my wife. She was really the one that taught me this. There is a value on your time and you do have to, you do have to look at that side of the equation. It's not just how much money are you going to make, but it's also how much time, how much energy and effort is it going to take to make that, you know, cause that's important too. So uh, those are all things that you need to ask yourself when you're kind of diving into whether or not coffee trucking is right for you. So let's ask a, a couple other questions here. So, all right. So you want to start a side hustle. Um, I, in my humble opinion, I think it's good to start your side hustle with a small investment first. Um, you take a small investment, the minimum amount to get started in that field, and you beta test that field. You see if there's results within that field. And this comes directly out of like lean startup, right? So beta testing, I think, is a very important skill set to have. Um, basically what you want to look at is what is going to be the initial cost for my startup investment. And this is just my two cents on this as well. If the initial investment doesn't work out, it goes, it goes south, right? How much will you, how much can you recoup out of your initial investment? So, you know, say you spend whatever, 10 grand and you, you know, buy a coffee truck or a coffee cart or whatever. Um, and then it doesn't, you, you give it all you got for a year and it's nothing, right? Well then can you take that coffee truck and turn around and sell it and get your 10 grand back? Because then at that point, you're not losing the investment on your financial side. You're going to lose the investment on time, no matter what you do, whether or not this works out or it doesn't, uh, it's going to take time and energy from you. But you know, it would be nice if you can get that money back, right? So when you're looking into the in initial investment, and that's what we cover in my courses on on, on my website, um, and when you're looking into the invest initial investment, also look into, you know, what does this initial investment sell for on eBay? What does this initial investment sell for on Craigslist? So look at how much you can sell it for if it doesn't pan out. Okay. All right. So you, so you check out your beta test. It looks good. You're like, all right, I feel like I can recoup my money. It's got a good resale value and, uh, that all looks good. The other side of that is what will it cost 
to take your beta test from that initial investment and move it up to your full time, you know, to to full time scale, so to speak. When you expand your business to becoming a full time operation, what's that going to cost? Okay, because that's important too, right? So you know, all right. So you go, okay, I have a beta test. I'm going to test this out. Give it a year. If I hit these amount of numbers, then I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to quit my day job and I'm going to go full time with coffee trucking. Awesome. Then at that point you go, well, how much is it going to cost for me to move full time? And um, uh, what what amount of money am I going to put into this to take this beta test and, and grow it into a full time operation? And you know, and again, like if you can find out if you can get that money back too, that's a good idea. You should run those numbers as well. So. Um, yeah. All right. So I think that's good there. So yeah. Um, all right. So what's your initial investment cost? Can you recoup it? How much does it cost to expand? How much do you, okay. So this is a really good equation. Uh, how much do you need? How much does your beta test need for you to feel comfortable making the jump from your weekend warrior status to your full-time operation? So how much do you need to, to feel comfortable saying, okay, Hey man, I've been rocking coffee trucks for a year now. I'm making this amount of money. I think I can do this. I think I can make the jump. That is your comfortability with risk. Everyone is going to have a different number. I personally have a lot more comfortability with risk. Okay. Some people aren't going to feel that way for me that, that aren't going to feel the same way um, as I do. And so it's important to honor that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock the numbers at smack dab in the middle. Okay. And you can take these numbers and you can adjust it to your comfortability as you need. Okay. So let's start off. So $30,000 a year, right? Cause I need 60 grand a year to, to live a comfortable life. Okay. So $30,000 a year is my objective. I want to do a beta test and I want to try this out and I want to see if I can make $30,000 a year off of my weekend hustle. Cool. Um, so $30,000, what does that look like? Well, if you do 30 events and you make a thousand bucks each event, then that's going to be, um, every other weekend that you work. Okay. If you only make 500 bucks an event, then you're going to have to work every weekend to make that 30 a year. Okay. So, excuse me. So I know just from my experience that if you give me 30, if you give me a thousand people, right? If you put a thousand people in front of my coffee truck, I can make a thousand bucks off of that. Now it's not just off the coffee sales. I've learned how to do coffee bag sales, merchandise, t-shirts, cups, upgrades, muffins, combos. There's a lot of things that go into making that money. Um, and I didn't make that in the beginning. It taught, it, it took a while for me to learn how to, how to do that. But if you put a thousand people in front of my truck, I'm going to make a thousand bucks. So I need to do 30 of those a year to hit 50% of what I need to make a good life, right? That number I need above the poverty line, blah, blah, blah. All right. So, you know, are there 30 events in my city that I can look up right now and find, you know, a thousand people attending. Do I have five K's? Do I have, you know, um, churches or, um, you know, congregations or these type of things right now? It's a very interesting time because COVID currently is in, in place, uh, but COVID will go and, you know, it's not going to last forever. Um, and at that point, you know, you, you go, okay, in my town, can I do, you know, can I make, can I, are there 30 events that I can hit? that I'm going to make that money. And, you know, maybe you won't make that money. Maybe you're going to need more than 30 events, right? So that's kind of the equation you need to, you need to kind of take a look at is, all right, how, you know, if I work the weekends, how much do I need to make per weekend in order for me to make the jump? Okay. Um, for me, it would be a thousand bucks a weekend every other weekend will put me into that category. I'll make $30,000 a year. Okay. $30,000 is smack dab in the middle. Right. And that that's enough information for me to go, okay, well I made 30 on the weekend. 
I bet I can make 30 on the weekdays. And so you go, okay, well, what would that look like? So let's run those numbers. Uh, thirty thousand dollars on the weekend on the <clears throat> excuse me thirty thousand dollars on the weekdays means that you need to make five hundred and seventy five dollars per week. Okay, if you run a route Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you just run a three day a week route. That's going to come out to five seventy five divided by three is going to come out to one hundred ninety one dollars per day. Let's just round that up for to two hundred dollars per day. Okay, you need to make two hundred bucks per day. In order to make a living all right so what does that look like well two hundred dollars per day at five dollars a cup is 40 cups per day okay that's reasonable right two hundred dollars per day at six dollars a cup meaning maybe you sell a muffin and a latte okay that comes out to 33 uh, tickets per day it's like okay that's pretty reasonable 33 I think I can sell 30 33 cups of coffee per day all right so if you were to sell so that would basically take four locations at eight cups or eight tickets per day. Okay. So four locations. Can you think of four locations that you can stop at where you can sell eight cups per day? I can think of five right out of the gate. I got a couple banks in mind. There's some hospitals. There's some schools that I could stop at. You know, I can pull up to a bank, sell five cups to the tellers and three cups to a customers. And then boom, I made my money for that day. Right. And so essentially it's like, Okay, well, four locations, you know, that's an hour location. It means you start your day off about six, seven o'clock in the morning. You end at noon. So you're working, you know, and you still got to go to the store and stuff. So you're working maybe five or six hours a day, three days a week, and then you work one of the days out of the weekend. So essentially you have four days a week that you work at, you know, give or take six, maybe seven hours a day. Your weekend, you work a little bit longer, so it's not quite the same as the route days. Um, but that's very reasonable. You know, it's essentially you're looking at generating $30,000 a year on the weekdays for working maybe five, six hours a day. And then you're making another $30,000 on the weekends um, for working maybe eight hours. It's like, okay, that's pretty reasonable. That's something that I think, for me, I go, yeah, I, I would definitely be interested in doing that. So um, to me, that's that's where that's what I look at as far as like making the jump from your side hustle into into your full time gig is like, OK, well, what is that going to require? Essentially, you know, how many hours am I going to have to put in and what are the intensity of those hours? OK, I work four hours on the route and hustle my ass off for those four hours. And then I do an hour in the morning, maybe to set up and maybe an hour to clean up and restock on supplies. It's like, that's cherry to me. That's that, you know, that's, that's, you know, I don't mind that at all. So, all right. So let's go back. Um, so essentially, you know, it comes down to a couple different things here and I got a list. It's go, it goes, all right. Should I start a coffee truck? I go, well, what's your initial investment going to be? You got to know your numbers and you got to know your code. Again, two things that I teach in my, in my courses. Um, what's the cost to expand your business? How much does it, how much does your beta test need to make for you to make the jump into full-time status? Um, how much money do you need every month? To live a to live a good solid life, something that you feel good with. And you got to run those numbers. You got to look at your budget. You got to figure out what you want to do with your life, what you really enjoy doing, and and run those numbers. And then, how many hours a week do you need to work to get to those numbers uh, to live a good life, so to speak? Um, so you know, probably gave you more more questions than I did answers. But you know, like any good education, that's usually you know, what happens is you end up with more, more questions and answers. Hey, listen, my name is Vince. I'm with Green Joe Coffee Truck. I help people start coffee trucks and carts and trailers and all that good stuff. I have a website. It's www.greenjoecoffeetruck.com. Um, feel free to check out, you know, like my courses, my ebook, my business plans on there. Um, I also have just a, a, a blog that you can dig around, find lots of good tidbits of information as far as getting into the mobile barista um, arena. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you like it, just subscribe. Um, if you like it, can you hit the like button for me? It'll help boost the video. Um, awesome. Thanks so much guys. Take care.